Hello all. Today I have a book to movie comparison of Carrie for you. So uh, we're gonna get a little dark, a little creepy on uh, here today. So getting right into it, this is the book version that I read. Some of you are probably going, what is up with that cover? Guys, it's vintage. It's vintage. This is my mom's copy from when she was in high school. It's the uh, first paperback edition of the book to be published. Uh, the book was originally published in 1974 and this is the 1975 version and uh, it's by Stephen King. Strangely they decided not to actually put the title or the author on the front of the book but instead they put it on the side. This is also Stephen King's very first novel and uh, definitely a good debut novel. Definitely creepy, gives you a good idea of what's coming for you with the rest of Stephen King's books. It follows high school girl Carrie White. Uh, she lives with her mother Margaret White in a town in Maine and basically she was raised by an extremely religious uh, mother, like fundamentalist. Imagine like the most religious person you know and then multiply it by like five times and you have Margaret White. Carrie is basically abused by her mother because she is forced into a small closet um, almost every day to pray. Her mother hits her, beats her, and says it's all in the name of, you know, forgiveness and admitting your sin and things like that. So Carrie has this horrible home life and then at school she gets teased because she dresses differently, she's extremely awkward, she um, doesn't have any friends, you know, she just doesn't really fit in. And the book starts off with her getting her period for the first time and not actually knowing what it is. Her mother didn't tell her and apparently at this time there was no sex education so she had no idea what was going on or maybe her mother didn't let her go to sex education. As these girls are making fun of her um, because she's getting her period for the first time one of the lights bursts and that's our first sense that something is different with Carrie. It's not that the light just broke it's because Carrie caused it to break. This rise of her power that they refer to as TK or telekinesis is what leads up to that infamous prom scene that everyone knows in which Carrie ends up drenched in blood and things just you know take a turn for the worse like the really really worst. The book was excellent. Five stars for me personally. I loved this book. Um, I read it in a, a, about 24 hours. I put it down just for like a minute and then I like want to go back to it again. Of course I know that there is both the 1976 I believe version of the movie and then there is the recently released 2013 version. I am actually going to be reviewing the 2013 version but the thing is I took a look at the 1976 version and they're actually quite similar in terms of the liberties that they take away from the book. So the two movies actually match each other a little little bit better than I would say the movies match the book but of course you know don't trust me on everything I only saw the 2013 version I did not see the one with Sissy Spacek. The movie is directed by Kimberly Pierce I've as far as I know I've never seen anything else by her before. It stars Julianne Moore as Margaret White, Chloe Grace Moretz as Carrie. Most of the other actors are pretty unknown however I do want to mention that Ansel Elgort is in this movie. He plays um, one of the better guys, a guy named Tommy who takes Carrie to prom. So that was kind of fun. I had no idea he was in there and it was interesting to see him acting before I'll see him in uh, Divergent and uh, The Fault in Our Stars. The movie is actually set in 2013 not 1979. The book is set in 1979. That's definitely a big difference and it plays into how technology plays a part and sort of the downfall of Carrie in terms of her getting super super angry at everyone and wanting to basically kill them. Cell phones play a part, YouTube plays a part, and so that was a that was obviously very different from the book but if you're going to set a movie in 2013 it's impossible not to include those sort of things. I guess they could have you know tried to shoot it in that 1976 vibe but putting a 2013 spin on it kind of differs it from the 1976 movie. A lot of lines from the book were very similar or exactly the same as I remember them being in the story and that was fun like certain things that the gym teacher yells at the students for is exactly what is brought up in the book and it was really nice to see that continue Continuation. Carrie calls her mother mama and that's you know solid throughout the book, solid throughout the movie and her mother is still definitely crazy. It's one thing to read it, it's another thing to see Julianne Morris you know slowly stabbing herself in the leg with something to make her bleed and it's part of her religious craziness and it's just it's a little hard to watch but the descriptions in the book are pretty intense as well. 
In terms of the differences, there are a fair amount of them. I mean, I could be as nitpicky as I wanted, but in terms of there's a much slower build up to the, her abilities taking place in the book. In the book, it's like she breaks that light and then it's a couple things here, a couple things there, and then she kind of realizes what she can do and she slowly starts practicing her and training herself in her room with her different things. In the movie, it's, you know, she figures out that she can do something and it sort of takes off really quickly. At one point she actually lifts her mother up and throws her down and that was never really in the book. The TK, the telekinesis part of it was um, much more subdued for a longer time whereas in the movie they really built it up. But you know, I can see why. It's a movie. People want to see her use her powers. It's cool even if it's, you know, not for the greatest reasons. The biggest difference I'd say is the, um, the way that the movie was shot in terms of point of views. The book is written like the story of Carrie is interspersed with uh, newspaper clippings and interviews and book snippets of people who experienced the prom night, the black prom as it's referred to, they experienced that. You actually hear things that happen at the prom before it actually happens in the book, so you have this kind of tense buildup and suspicion of, oh my god, what is actually gonna happen here? Who is actually gonna die? How are things gonna play out? That wasn't really possible in the movie. They hinted at it, it happened at the end with one of the main characters, Sue Snell, who, you know, speaks many times in this book through interviews in the court and her book that she wrote. It kind of only really happens at the end of the movie. I guess it could have been incorporated, but maybe it wouldn't have been the easiest thing to do, but I really like the way that played out in the book. The thing that really bothers me is what happens around prom. After the blood is dropped on Carrie, everything is kind of different from how it is in the book. There's supposed to be massive destruction, not destruction in the school, and it was definitely kept to that. Certain characters are supposed to die different ways, and I, I liked and preferred the way it happened. In the book, I thought it was more dramatic. The fact that she used her telekinesis to sort of almost, everyone could sense that she was coming, and in the movie that wasn't there, and I was kind of hoping it would be. That all being said, this movie does still capture the terror and the awkwardness that Carrie is subjected to and that she feels. Sue Snell, who I mentioned earlier, she is still, you know, very much a part of the movie as she is part of the book and her character is one of, you know, the few people that actually feels badly for Carrie and wants her to, you know, to be treated properly and that is definitely evident in the movie. But um, it lacks the scale of devastation that was very evident and very much discussed in the book. At the end of the book, there's sort of this looking back and realizing how Carrie completely changed that town that she's from in Maine. Everyone who was there that night, not just the people in the school, everyone was changed by this. And the fact that TK is actually a genetic thing is talked about a lot in this book. Not so much in the movie, it's mentioned, but the book ends with talking about how are they going to deal with the other children that have these TK abilities that manifest. It's a recessive thing, it doesn't come up in everyone, but when it comes up, it's really bad. <laughs> and that was not there in the movie. That fear of what are we going to do next wasn't really there. So like I said, five out of five stars for the book. I think I'd give the movie maybe three stars. It was still entertaining. I liked seeing particular actors playing certain parts, but it just, if you want to experience Carrie, you need to read the book. <laughs> then feel free to watch the movies and make your own opinion with that, but. <laughs> If you have read Carrie or seen the movies, either of them, let me know what you thought of them below. Did you feel like maybe the movie was a bit more interesting because her TK abilities were more evident? I don't know. Let me know what you thought. Um, as always, all of our links are in the doobly-doo. You can check those out. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you later.